last time um the the last class i didn't somehow the recording got lost and so i i never put the last class up uh and those of you that were here were treated to some things that i had that i haven't covered since i can't i can't remember offhand what they are now but um i ended up making uh the first video over again and i posted that up like the next day and then i've, I've made a second video so um uh, let's see, this is ICS, uh, no, ITS-128. Uh, this is the uh, September 3rd, 2024, and it is the second week of class. So let me share my screen and we'll get started here. Hmm. I'm not used to using only one screen. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay, good. This is off in the corner. Yeah, I don't, you can, oh, you can see that, can you? Can't you? Oh, that, no. I wonder if the people at home can see this. Um, let me just put this down. Gosh, I wish I had a second screen. Do I have a second screen? Gotta bring my other screen. Um, okay. Um, I wonder if the is is there anybody signed in Zoom? Are you signed anybody signed in? Okay, well, I'm just wondering if this thing at the at the top here. So it doesn't matter. I just put it. Can I get rid of it? Um okay. Well, I'll just try to ignore it. There, I, I have that control panel thing at the top that I can't really see. Am I on the screen? I guess. Um okay, hold on. I can do this. I'm gonna uh, pause the recording for a moment. How do I pause? Screen sharing is paused. I don't want to do that. I want to pause the recording. Oh, here. I'll pause recording. Okay, sorry this is taking so long. All right, now I'm going to share my screen and see what happens. Share. Ooh. I'm going to share this. Oh, okay. I'm going to share the screen. And then... Then I'm gonna um where's my stuff here? I'm gonna yes, I'll see it. I'm gonna see it. Here we go. And uh I'll take this, go like this. Ah, there we are. Oh, where's the mouse? My mouse isn't working. My smokes. Oh, there's my notes. Okay, all right. Okay, so very good. Let's get started. Um, uh, this is uh, I, this is the second course. Let's go to uh, I click on ITS one twenty eight, and here we are. This is kind of kind of awkward for me. Bear with me. Oh, what happened to my mouse? It's like my mouse disappeared. Oh, there it is. All right, so if we look at the syllabus, uh, this is the second week of the semester, so we are in this time period, 9-3 today. So we're going to do Chapter 2 today, and let's see what Chapter 2 looks like. Oh, by the way, have you all, have you all done weekly engagement? Okay, well, it looks like number two is up there now, so you actually only have to do one, but because I just need to know you're, you're, you're here. So if you've already done it, then fine. And next week, I'm just going to take that off, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Uh, let's go to the textbook. And uh, let's go to chapter three. Hope this logs in the end. Okay, 128. Uh, oh, chapter two. Okay, here we are. Okay, variables and assignments. If we look at my activity, what does it look like? This is, I think I've, I've done all these things. I guess this, I don't know if this is slow for me um, or slow for everybody, but. Um, Okay, so by the way, I, sh I should have pointed this out in the beginning. Make sure you all know this, which I'm sure you all do. Everybody here does. But uh, so there's the uh, playlist. This is the playlist. And um, the um, it's a YouTube playlist. The first 
play the first video uh more or less replaces what the what the lab was or what what, what this lecture was last Tuesday. So you folks here don't really have to um watch it because but you can if you want to. And I, I think I go over these, I go over the uh the lab that I covered and I go over the challenge activity a little bit more step by step. So if you're stuck on on any either lab or any of the challenge activities in chapter one, then then you can go watch this. Go watch I'm sorry, this is the first one. Is this out of order? Oh I'm gonna Okay, I'm gonna try to reverse the order here. Can I do that now here? Oh yes I can. All right. Oh I like the first one at the top. Okay, the first one's at the top. <laughs> um, so if you if you're stuck on on any of the assessments of chapter one, I, I cover them very clearly in the video. And I, in in one of these two videos, I'm not going to cover them so so clearly um, in, in the future. But um, uh, this time I, I I am because I want you to get used to getting all the points because there's no reason why I can't get all the points. So. Uh, in this class, this class, if you don't get get an A, it's because you just didn't ha have enough time, and, and you know for for whatever reason, uh, because um, if you're persistent enough, you can get to ninety percent. And so if 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 in the end you really want to get ninety percent and you're not getting it, or you some stuck, just just email me. I'll I'll go. I, I can go in and see what you did, see which ones you didn't do. I can maybe even find some of the easier ones that you didn't do and sort of give you hints there and. So, uh, you know, I'm all for people, you know, I'm all for people coming and doing what they, you know, saying, I, I would really like that grade. So what can I do to get that grade? And that kind of request works with me. It doesn't work with everybody, but it works with me. I was once in those shoes. So. Okay. So anyway, let's get back to. Um, so um, in this chapter two, we define, this really gets into. Um, uh, we're starting to get into the nitty gritty of of the language of Python. In the first chapter, we sort of covered a little bit of everything just to give you an idea of what programming was like. And now we're going to get down to the, the the basics of it. And so uh, there's a here we we start with covering uh, the concept of a. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to. Okay, so. Um, First, first, we're going to define a variable, and you've all you all pretty much know what a variable is. It's just a a named container that can store a value. So, and, and that container has a name name for it, a name, and it's the variable name, and like a letter, like I or J or X or whatever. And and uh, if you want to, whenever you refer to that name, you are really referring to the to the the contents of that variable or or the value itself. So and and then uh, identifiers actually defines what a name can be, uh, a, a name. You know, a name can't be like a number, uh, and so on. So that's what that is. Um, in um, since the '90s, we've uh, all, all languages have moved to uh, the added added another thing besides variables, and they, those are objects. And objects are just variables with little programs connected to them. So it's it's variable. Uh, an object is 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 a group of one or more variables those variables can be be numbers or there can be it can be a string of characters or whatever variables uh a, a group of variables and then um and then there's a there's also a bunch of they call them methods or little little subroutines or programs that go along with that are inside of the object that are part of the object uh, and all the operations that can be done on those on those variables of that object are done by one of the the methods the little programs that are associated with that object and that makes it very, very um, um, easy to make sure that, that you don't make an error. So now, and then we go into the, the, the types of variables. And so we, there's floating points and integers and so on. I, I'm just gonna briefly go through this. Uh, and then, then uh, uh, once we have fully defined variables, then we can make expressions like, like A plus B is an expression. It's got a variable a in there. It's got a variable b in there, and then it also has an operator in the middle, which is the plus. So there are a bunch of different ways that, that expressions are. Are uh, there's a bunch of things to know about expressions. And then Python expressions are just expressions, but it's actually any language expressions, and that's where 
you know, you may have an expression that's got a that's got an upper on top. It's this. It's got a line and it's dividing or so you know, a whole bunch of stuff is square roots and all that kind of stuff. A bunch of little numbers all over the place. Uh, a Python expression has got to be all in one line. So there's ways to convert. And then um, for computers, uh, in, in computers, we there's two kinds of division. Okay, in in, in in high school or in grade school and high school, you learn division where you divide five by two and you get, you know, 2.5 because 2.5 times two is five. Uh, so uh, that's one number. Well, well, it can also be, you know, five divided by two can also be two with a remainder of um what two I guess one with well, the remainder of one. So five divided by two is two with a remainder of one. So those are the two ways that we we learn to divide in high school, and um, uh, and so modulo is just a way to get just the remainder. Let's say you're doing five divided by two, and all you care about is the one. You, you all you care about is is what's what makes it not a not an even number. So that's the module. So, and we use that a lot. See that? Oops. Um, and uh, and then we have oh, modules. Okay, I guess we're, we're learning about modules. You'll you, you, you'll see what those are when we get to them. But but those are ways of uh, of of incorporating different operations that we might use for particular uh, like a like a like a math square root function or a math, uh, you know, to the power of some variable function. Um, those are not, those kinds of operations are not expressed by just a symbol in between two, two, two numbers. They're expressed in other ways and, and, and modules come into play there. So anyway, let's, let's just start with, uh, let's, let's do the ones where there's uh, challenge activities at least. Okay. So um, here we're, we're, uh, this is the concept of, of a variable and the variable is going to be the number of people on a bus. Okay. So if we start this, we say, okay, you're driving a bus and the bus starts out with five people and three people get on the bus. So then how many, how many people do you have on the bus after three people get on? Well, now we have eight, eight. I think that's what we're doing here. Okay. Uh, that's correct. And then it says uh, what's next. Then two people get off. So, so what's the num people variable a after we apply that? And it's it's six because two people get off, and then we um, four people get off, and so six minus four is two, and then uh, uh, then five people get on, so five plus two is seven, and then. Uh, um, four people get on, so se seven plus four is eleven, and then we're done. So then we got the check mark up there, okay? And then when we go back to, uh, you know, you don't have to do this every time, of course. But then when you go back here, you should see that you have ah oh, six percent. I got six percent of the participation activities in that second chapter, and of course you want to try to get all the participation activities uh, because that that those are the easiest points to get, pretty much. Okay, so um, so let's go to the challenge. Let's, so so that's defining the concept of a variable. Um, here we have uh, variables and assignments. We talk about assignments already. So so an assignment is you have a variable on the left side, and on the right side you have, uh, which we'll learn more about. On the right side you have an expression. So you evaluate the right side, the five here, and then then that that value gets stored into the variable on the on the left. Uh, so, you know, here we're putting the value five into the variable x, so x equals five. Here we're putting the value x into the, into variable y. So now now y is is also equal to five. It's just two variables. Each of them they're separate variables. Each of them have a five, are at the value five. Here, this is an expression. This six plus two. So we take take x, which is five. Uh, yeah, I should start this and see it, watch it. So 
we say x equals five, so five goes there. Um, x y equals x, so we take the the five out of the x and put it into the y. And the third one is we take the x out of the we take the x out of the out of there and add two to it and that equals seven. Put the seven into the z. And uh, what's next? So then we add. Then we set x equal to three, so we overwrite the five. The five, this, the five in x is gone now, uh, and then, um, uh, then we, what do we do? I don't know. We just thought the the equal sign isn't equals, but it's an action that puts a value into a ver of into the variable. So, yeah. So, um, uh, normally an equal sign in in math or in algebra or in, when you learn it in school is you, you are you're saying you know that the two things are are equal. The two sides are equal. Well, that's not what an equal sign means here. An equal sign here means you're taking whatever is on the right side, evaluating it, and storing that value on it. In, into the left side. So you're actually, you're, so you're defining an action. After it's all done, a, after the, the statement is, is done executing, then yeah, it'll be true that the value on the left is equal to the value on the right. But, but, but when the Python computer or interpreter or whatever you want to call it, compiler uh, uh, processes this, it's, it's actually doing an action, taking the X and putting, taking the value of that's on the right side and putting it into the variable on the left side. Um, in uh, the only language that I can think of that where the, it was different, or the only mainstream language I can think of where they didn't use an equal sign, they used colon e. In uh, the language called Pascal, they, the the equal sign was not the, the assignment statement was not an equal sign; it was a colon equal, and that that kind of made more sense because you're saying you know, y colon equals whatever is 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 on the right side. And so it's more of a a, a statement saying that that you that you're doing an action here. <clears throat> but you know everybody knows what this means. So you know they just so in, in all this in all this in all the languages before that and all the languages after that they just drop the colon and they just use the equal sign. Um and you you'll see later that if we really if we're if we really do want to test equality let's say we want to test if x is equal to y uh, and so so there we 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 use a double equal sign and so that means that's different a double equal sign means you're testing equality whereas a single equal sign means you're doing an assignment all right um all right so i have a, so just just go through this I, I have a i have a feeling that a lot of you a lot of you this is old 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 news to you uh let's just do a couple of these challenge activities just so you just get going here uh, uh, okay, this is reminding you that when you do a print, it actually puts a new line after that. Okay, so um, type the program's output. Uh, X equals nine, Y equals six. And so if we print X followed by Y, it's gonna be nine and then a space because there's a comma in, in there and then the six and then enter. See, that's easy. What's next? Type the program's output. Here we're first we print out X, then we print out Y and put a safe space in between. These are just two easy. 10 space Y uh, is two. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Check that one. Right. Okay. So, so I can do this, but you can't. You got to go sequentially. But I'm going to go to the last one and see if it's really hard. Uh, okay. Number six. What are we supposed to do? The y is five. X is y plus two. So first of all, y is okay. We're printing x and y. So y is five. X equals y plus two. So that means x equals seven. X equals seven, and then we destroy the old value of y and we put a new value in there, and it's thirteen. So x was seven, and a y was was a 13, so is that right? Yeah, so seven, seven space 13, enter. All right, so very good. So you can go on and do that in middle three. 
All right. Are there any more? Um, let me just go down here. Are there any more challenges? Ah, here's another challenge. Okay, let's do this one. What is this up here? Complete this statement to increment y. y equals y plus plus 1. Okay, so here, this is an example uh, where, um, you know, the, the value on the left is not equal to the value on the right. It's, you know, the, the, the statement executes, uh, but it's not true that the value on the left is equal to the value on the right. Why? Because you've changed the value on the left. Okay, so you do the assignment, and then the value on the left change, the value, then once you do the assignment, there is a value on the right that changes, but that's okay. So anyway, so sometimes you might think that this doesn't make sense, but it does. You're taking the old value of x, you're adding one to it, and you're saving into the, you're saving it back into x. So this has this is this in this is how they say it is this increments x by one. Increments one by two. This this this. So so y starts out equal equaling thirty. Then we add two to it. So now it's thirty two. So now x is equal to thirty two. And then now then we add one to thirty two, and we end up with x equaling thirty three. What what are we supposed to say here? Indicate the value of x. Okay, so it's thirty three. It looks like I think. All right, very good. Okay, let's do this one. Assign start. Assign variable this equal to that. Hmm. Oh, and then we would print it out. Oh, these are just these are just too e easy. Uh, num l e m u r s. I have no idea what that is. Equals seventy, and then we check it and. I guess I got the, I guess I got all the points. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Let's do uh, let's do the let's do the last one. Just because these are too easy. Okay. Oh, we're asking the user to enter in some stuff. So we're asking the user to enter in a number, and it. Uh, hmm. What do want us to do? Oh, we oh they want us to compute a total. Okay, and let's see. It says here integers num chairs and num tables are read from input representing the number of chairs and tables. May has respectively oh respectively so uh, these are the number of chairs and the number of tables that May has respectively. May's number of chairs increases three times. May removes four tables. First, write statements to update num chairs and num tables. Okay, so first I'm going to write um, First, write statements to update num chairs and then, okay, May's number of chairs increases three times. May's number of chairs. Okay, so num chair, oh, num chairs uh, equals May's number of chairs increases three times. So it equals num chairs times three. Okay, oops, chairs. Now I could say num chairs plus num chairs plus num chairs. I could do that. That's that's making it three times, but this is just as easy or easier. And then May removes four tables. Next assign. Okay. Oh, and tables. Uh, May removes four tables. So I'm gonna say num tables, oops, underscore tables equals num tables minus four removes four tables and then assign total furniture to the total number of chairs and the total plus the total number of tables so I'm, now i'm going to do total furniture got to make sure everything's spelled correctly 
uh, equals num shares plus num tables. Okay, and then that's it. Oh, this is a pretty hard one. All right, so let's uh, check this one. Looks like I got it. What? Oh, I see that. The reason it's hard is I went to the fourth one I had. Okay, so I got that one. Very good. So let, let me just see what this one is. Uh, number, okay. Integer num vest is read from input representing the number of vest bought. Assign num hats to the same number of vest bought. So uh, right here we're gonna we're gonna assign num hats. Jeez. Num hats equals to the number of vests. Okay, that takes care of that first one. Assign num hats with the same number of vests. Oh, is that all we got to do? Hmm, guess so. Let's see what the third one is. I'll just tell you how to do it. Num coins is read from input representing the number of coins a person has. Then the person loses three coins. Okay, so right here, you just, you just, you know, this thing reads in the number of, of coins. So now the variable num coins contains a three. No, contains whatever, whatever you input. That's what it contains. And then you just take that number and you subtract three from it. So the code that goes here is would be num coins equals num coins minus three because it decreases by three. All right, so you can do that one. All right, so that's the end of that. Let's go back to here. And so I should see, I guess there's some I didn't do. Okay, identifiers here, we're just talking about um, how um, uh, the, you know, like a variable name, it's like, like what's a valid variable name and uh, does the case of the letters matter and stuff like that? Well, um, variables, so variables, um, uh, so variables can can contain letters, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, underscores, and digits. Uh, now the only caveat is the first character has got to be a letter or an underscore. Can't be a digit. But after the first letter, or after the first character, you can have any any number of digits or or you know any of these combinations. And by case sensitive, we mean that a lowercase a is different than an uppercase a. Now, um, uh, the reason the reason you know that the reason it's important is because uh, you can't be lazy about the cases. You know, you have to if, if you name something with an uppercase, it'd be an uppercase letter. If it's capitalized, uh, you got to make sure that you're always that it's always capitalized uh, when you use it. Otherwise, the interpreter the python interpreter is going to think you're referring to a different variable and if that variable happens to be on the right side of an assignment statement it's gonna um say there's an error because you you're using you're using a variable that hasn't been defined if it ends up on the left side of the statement if you if you misspell a variable on the left side in other words um you know, you're, you're doing some expression calculation and then, and then you store that into a variable name and you, you, you've got the name wrong because you got the case of one of the letters wrong, then it's not going to tell you it's an error. It's just going to think you're defining a new variable. Okay, so, so then you're kind of screwed. So that's why it's important. Uh, also, uh, variables cannot be what they call as reserved words or key words. And there are certain key words like like, uh, you know, this true is you know, capital T R U E is can't you, you, you can't have a variable called capital T R U E because that's a value. You know, that's that's like a one. And there's false is like a zero. So capital F A L S A L S E is is a reserved word. It actually means something. So you can't use that for a variable name. 
you can use lowercase t r u e or lowercase f a l s, and that's fine. It's not those aren't the same because it's case sensitive. Uh, and then um, there's a bunch of other reserved words that you'll learn, uh, and you, those obviously cannot be na variable names either. So this is valid. This is valid. This is valid. This is valid. Uh, ooh, this is not valid because you can't have a space. Oh, it's not valid because you can't start with a three. It's got to can't start with a number. Uh, this is valid. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, ooh, can't have an exclamation point. What, what what's that about? Okay, no, it's invalid. Um, uh, see, uh, now I don't know if output is a reserved word or not because it's a pretty common. It's probably a reserved word in some languages, but let's see. Let's just see. I'm going to say it's valid. Ah, it is valid. So it's, it doesn't. There's no reserved word. You know, output doesn't have a special meaning in Python. And then this is valid too. So here they give you some sort of meaning. Use meaningful names. Uh, these are the reserved words. So you can't have variables. These words cannot be used for variables. And these all have a special meaning in Python, which we'll learn. The good news is that there aren't very many of them. So, you know, it, by the end of this semester, you should actually be familiar with all these. You might not use all of them, but familiar. All right, so that's 2.2. What time is it? Um, objects are just variables. They're, in, in addition to variables, um, well, there's a little bit more to, to, to objects, but um, let's see. There, uh, with... Some of this is not important to, some of these, the distinction is is not important at this early, early on, but it actually does treat objects a little bit differently. Uh, when you assign, uh, you know, a variable can can be a, be a number, you know, but it can also be, be, be an object. It's not, it's, it's actually like, uh, the address of an object. So when you assign a different variable name equal to, a, if you assign a, a variable equal to another variable that's an object, you're, you are actually saying it's the same thing. So if, if one changes, the other would changes. Those are very, you know, um, ambiguous distinctions at this point, but Later on in the semester, you'll see that that's important, and they, they they actually should be something that you keep track of because we uh, we learn about this concept, which they call um, what, what you you learn this concept that uh, some variables can be changed. Um, you you can assign a new value to a variable, and it just uses the same container in the memory, just assigning a new value in there. But there's other cases where when you do an assignment, you actually have to create a new one. And the old one just gets thrown away. And there are cases, there, and there are those kinds of cases too. Um, and so we're gonna learn about that later, but it's not really important that we go through that here. And there aren't any challenge activities. And I can't think of any ways that, it, that they would actually test you on understanding the um, difference. Um, what, which built-in functions finds the type of an object? Um, I guess you do this, the type function. We can, we can just see what the answer is. And it's the type function that that will tell you what the type of the... Of the uh, so, so let's just run this. We have three variables. Uh, the first and the third are integers and the, and the middle one is a string. So let's run this and see what... So these are... Um, These are special functions in Python, which help you understand uh, these, these become relevant, you know, way later on, but right now it's just a good idea to know, to know of them. Uh, there's this type function, which tells you what, what kind of variable it is. And so this is an integer, this is an integer, and this is a string. So we see the type of birthday year, the type is integer. It looks like that The type is string, the type is integer. Uh, the value, of course, is this, this, and this. And then we have this ID, and this is 
probably a memory, the memory location in the RAM memory. You know, that looks like it's probably about what that number is. And so those are going to be unique. And sometimes when you're doing equality, you're actually assigning, uh, you're copying over the ID, which is means it's the same object. But in the other, other times, you're not copying over the ID. You're creating a new object with the same type and same value. So that's one of the, one thing that's a little kind of important and more important in Python than than it has been in any of the other languages that I've uh, used and taught. So that's um, objects, and now we're going to lo look at some of the other types and expressions and so on. So then there's some challenge activities in here. So let's uh, let's get at those. So, of course, a floating point number is a number that's got a decimal point. And um, so there's, so like this is a floating point number, this is a floating point number. And then we have, uh, is it written with the fractional part, even if the fraction is zero? Okay, floating point, literal. Okay, so so anyway, float, float is a data type. Um, I think we'll see, I guess, um, we'll see when we actually use this term uh, in the right side of an of an of an assignment statement below the program. The below program means a floating point value from a user and calculates a time built-in function float. Okay, so um, see, I should do something so I can see if anybody's. Um, okay, so here, here we are. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember if we've talked about int and float at all. But um, here we're reading in. We're asking the user to type in a number, and we're saying we're telling the user um, enter a distance in miles. Okay, so then the user is going to type in a number, and the user is going to type in a string. Right. So if the user types in four five zero it's really the character four followed by the character five followed by the character zero and then this float function takes that input this is the input takes that input and it converts it into the internal representation for a floating point number so that's going to be four five zero point zero or something and then and then we take this miles number and we calculate a another variable called hours to fly and what that is is taking this this floating point number of miles number that was entered and divided by 500, assuming the plane is going at 500 miles an hour. And this is how, how long it takes to drive, assuming the car is being driven at 60 miles an hour. And so this, these are floating point numbers, floating point numbers. So the result is going to be a floating point number. And so here it's going to print a floating point number. Uh, okay, it's going to print three floating point numbers. Well, well what does it print? It prints... 450.0 and it prints 0 0.9 or prints and then it prints um 7.5. And then when you enter in another one, it does the same thing. So that's float. And then there's there, then there's another one called scientific notation. And in there, uh for there we use this E, uh, you know, exponent stands for exponent. So if so if if we want to write a number like this, you've seen this, I hope in high school or whatever, it's just you don't have, you don't have to have used it, but maybe you saw it in some class where really you're trying to represent this number. And so the decimal point is one, two, three. Here we we convert this into a one, because it's really one. If we move the decimal point all the way over three spots to the to the right. It, it becomes one, but then we have to say that we moved it over three spots to the right, and that's what this is, times 10 to the minus three. Minus three because it's the right. If, if, if we were writing, if we were trying to write the number 1,000, then that would be one times 10 to the third power because it's be 1,000, and you move the decimal point over three to make this a one. Anyway, you might not ever have to use this in the semester, but it's good to know because someday you might have to use it. Uh, so... So that's just another way of representing number. Uh, this is like, for example, um, this 6.02 E23 is really 6.02 times three, 
6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Does, does anybody know what number that is? It's one of the few things I remember from chemistry class. It's that's Avogadro's number. And I have no idea what it what it's what it means. But anyway, so so you can do some of these. What is this? This is really um point is uh zero point uh three oh three uh two three four one. So is that right? It's this is uh one two three four no it should be just three zeros i think so the decimal point is here and i'm moving it to the right one two three four so it ends up being 1.0 times 10 to the minus third four, fourth is that right yeah it is right okay so you can do the rest of them oh here it's converting um Energy to mass, you know, Einstein and all that. This is these are the calculations. Units, gotta pay attention to units. Units are very important. All right, so uh there was some uh oh uh overflow, it's it's you know the it's possible that that because the numbers are so big or they're so small that you overflow uh what the what the computer what the variable in RAM can actually hold. And so when that occurs, you get you get it you get an interrupt and all that. But 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 anyway, the um, so in Python in a regular what they say thirty two bit installation of Python, the maximum floating point value is this one point eight times ten to the three hundred eighth power. So if you try to represent a number bigger than that, then you can't do it. And then the smallest one, the sm smallest number you can represent is two point three times ten to the minus three hundred eighth power. And if you actually convert these numbers to to some binary number, it's going to be like, you know, exactly, um, you know, thirty two bits of ones and zeros. And anyway, it's um, um, these these numbers are not arbitrary. It has to do with converting from base ten to base two and how many base two bits you have. Thirty two bits. There's thirty two bits total, but some of those bits represent the the three hundred eight. And and more of those bits represent some more of those bits represent the two point three, and there's a bit there that represents if this is a minus and this this is not a minus. So there's a bit there that indicates that, and then there's another bit that indicates if if uh, if the number itself is a negative number or a positive number. Like is it one point eight or is it minus one point eight? Okay, so that's 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 how all the and there there's there's a there's a stand there's um it's there's an agreed upon um, number of bits for each of these and whether they're at the top top of the word or at the bottom of the word and all that. And so that's where all those numbers come from. But but you don't have to know any of that. All right, so um, so where's some challenge? Okay, gallons of paint needed to paint walls. Okay, so um, number of gallons needed to paint a wall is equal to the number of walls area divided by 350. So you first you calculate the number of first you calculate the area of the wall, and then you divide it by 350, and that's how many gallons of paint you need. Okay, so we have a program that reads the wall area, and um, and then you have to complete the program to figure out the number of gallons of paint for that area. Okay, so we have the uh, and we want it to print out this we'll, we'll, and yeah we just wanted to print it out so we read in the wall area and then we can just say print well let's let's do it more uh num gallons equals wall area divided by 350 um okay now okay yeah so we were talking about all right so yeah 350 you get yeah should put the point zero and then then we're going to print out num num gallons so print num gallons and so with this input it should print that and so let's see what see what it, this does <gasps> 
Uh, let's see, what did I do? So my output looks like that and the expected output looks like that. So what did I do wrong? And what it is, is it's just these numbers, these extra numbers here. Wow, that's weird. So I'm going to try this. See what that does. No, I still get that. Hmm. Is there something that makes me limit the... Oh, rounded to five digits after the decimal point. Ah, I'm missing something. I'm missing something that rounds this number. Uh, what is that? Oh, look at that. I passed right over this. This is important. This is how, this tells how you reduce the number of digits after the decimal point. It looks like this. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put it there and I'm going to, uh, then change. It's not num math. Dot pi, I want to print out it's uh, this is the math module and the pi. If, if you want to use the number pi, you can just uh, bring in this. There's a at the top, you say that you want to use the math module, and then you just say this, and that gives you 3.14159 or whatever. Okay, so this reduces this makes it 4.4 digits to the right of the decimal point, and we want um, five digits. Five digits. So I'm just going to change this to a five. I bet you that does it. And, oh, not math pi. It's num gallons. Num gallons. All right. See what this does. Yeah, okay. Hey, there you go. Very good. Hmm. Okay, inverse of input volt is one over input volt. Okay. The following program intends to read a floating point value from input and output the inverse. But the code contains an error from reading the input. Fix the error. Ah, okay. So we have this error here. Oh. Okay, now the problem with this program is that we're reading in a number and then we're converting it into an integer. And um it just turns out it's not running. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's that's obviously the problem. I think I'm pretty sure this should be float. Okay, I'm gonna change it to float. I was gonna say something else, but I all right. All right, got it. Okay, what's next? Let's do uh let's do the well, let's see what the next one. Polynomial is this. So we have some number times some variable s squared, that's s times s, minus some number times just the variable s, minus some number. So reads s from input as a float and computes the polynomial, the result of the polynomial. S squared can be computed by using the asterisk. Okay. So first of all, we're going to read S. Um, uh, input um, S. S equals floating point number, F-L-O-A-T. Input. So this input asks the user for an input and then converts it to a floating point number and stores it into X. And you know they like you to put spaces here. And then um, uh, we're going to compute Q. And then we're going to print it out here. So once we have S, we're going to say Q equals um, minus. 
zero times s times s and then minus 3.5 times s minus 6.5 got that so it's just four the, the minus four times the s times the s See, that's what that's what this hint is sorry uh, and then three point five, and 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 um, and you don't have to put any parentheses because the order is going to work out because uh, multiplication it always does the multiplications before it does any um, additions or subtractions. So and and that's what we want. We want the first thing to happen is they that this whole thing gets computed four times s times s, and then before we subtract it, we want this to be computed three times. 3.5 times s and then after that and then we want the 6.5 is there and then and then so after so after this whole thing is computed then we want to compute this thing then we want to do the subtractions so then we'll go back and see what this computed to and then we'll subtract what this computed to and then we'll subtract 6.5 at the end and that's going to give us the number All right, let's do the last one. We can do the third one. Uh, we're going to read this and this and this from input as floating point numbers. Uh, then we're going to compute the potential energy using the formula. We're going to compute potential energy, and the formula is, uh, it looks like it's this times this times this I think it's object mass times planet gravity times object weight height finally output the potential energy as uh um followed by oh output the words potential energy is followed by the value okay so and we have to write the whole thing okay that's fine now you notice it's kind of we, they they make it so you can't copy this and paste it down here because that's exactly what the what the formula is or that's exactly what the statement is but anyways let's let's uh let's do this uh so we have a potential object mass mass equals a floating point number that is read in Okay, and then we also have planet gravity uh, equals another floating point number, red in. And then we have object height, object height equals float of input. Okay, so now we have all three of those in there, and now we're just going to compute potential energy, and it's just this equation here, but they don't let us copy, so we got to write it out. Potential energy. I wonder if I just do this. PE equals uh, object mass. In fact, I can probably call these something different also. Times planet gravity times object height. Okay, and then, I, then, then I'm just supposed to print it out looking like this. So um, I guess what it is, is it's something similar to this. So I'm just gonna sneak and copy this because I'm too lazy to commit it to memory. I'm just gonna paste that here. And I'm going to change this to PE, potential energy. Oh, I need to print out. Um, and how do I do that? How do I print a word out first? Does it, tell, does it have an example of that? I'll do it this way. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll do it that way. Uh, first, I'll do. Oh. Uh, first, I'll do print. Uh, potential capital, potential energy is close the quote right there. A comma end equals to a space, and then print that out. And I want three decimal digits. Three decimal digits. Three. One, two, three. Point three. Okay, let's see if this works. All right, got all the points. Very good. And, you know, you could probably just do OM, object mass, PG, OH, um, OM, PG, OH, and that probably works too. So anyway, all right, that's all the uh, challenges in 2.4. There's more in 2.5. What time is it? We're getting there. Um, I think uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll go home and if I don't get very far, I'll, I'll, I'll go home and do another another um video to cover the rest of it there's a question here yes that yeah that very good uh yeah there is a round uh, someone mentioned that if you look at the chat that somebody mentioned round it and that, that that maybe round it and that was that was up when i was trying to figure out how to do the how many digits to the right of the decimal point and i think you can round it there's a round function in python and you could have used that and I and I could have tried that, but I might not have gotten the right answer because, well, I might have gotten the right answer. I don't know. Good, good, uh, good, good uh, suggestion there. All right, so let's uh, let's let's do uh, arithmetic expressions. I gotta go this way. So um, you know we've already done some arithmetic expressions, but we just have to know that the plus sign is addition, like it always is. Minus sign is subtraction, like it always is. The multiplication symbol is an asterisk, and the division symbol is a slash. And exponent is is two 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 uh, asterisks. So when we were doing uh, s times s, or when, when we were doing s squared, we could have done s asterisk asterisk two, and that's the same as you know s to the power of two, which is what this is. Um, so this. Um, so uh, by valid expressions, we're, we're just talking about what can be on the right side of an assignment statement. This can be on the right side of an assignment statement. This cannot be on the right. Oh, yes. Yeah, this can be on the right side of an assignment statement. This can be on the right side of an assignment statement. So can this. This cannot because 2x doesn't mean anything. This, this looks like a variable that starts with a 2. It's not. It, this doesn't look like two times x to the to the to Python the Python interpreter. So this is not valid. There should be a. If, if you mean two times x, you should put an asterisk in between there. And so there. Uh, this same thing. If if you mean. Uh, all right. X y is a valid variable name, and it's okay to put parentheses around a, a variable name and just. So this is valid. It'll be. It, uh, but but if you really mean x times y then this is not valid let's see what let's see what they say I, i'm going to say it's not valid because i think that's what they mean could be wrong no i'm going to say it's valid because that's really the correct answer uh, in programming doing multiplication via abutment well, i didn't never heard that term before as an xy is usually not allowed because xy could be the name of another variable well i just, just are you, does it say up here X and Y? Ah, okay. If I would have read the instructions, I would know that, no, they mean X times Y here. So no worries. Okay. And yes, this is, oh, this is not a valid expression because you, because you can't have an equal sign in the middle of an expression most of the time. 
So th this is a whole this is the whole assignment statement. This is a valid expression, but but not including this. So that's why it's not valid. It's not it's not valid. It's all right. So uh, that's learning about expressions and then how parentheses work. Um, you always do what's inside the parentheses before you do it before you do other stuff. Uh, this exponent is is that's got the that's got a higher priority than multiplication and division. So this is precedence rules for arithmetic operations. Um, so you know you have to know things like and, and we'll practice this. Uh, but th these precedence rules are actually precedence rules in mathematics in general. But that doesn't mean you you remember them. Uh, but you know, uh, um, so parentheses. You know, there's parentheses is the highest priority, and then exponents are next priority. And then a minus sign in front, a, a minus sign in front of a number that's the next priority. Uh, that's not. This is minus sign for subtraction, but um, multiplication and division and modulo, uh, which is which is do the operation and tell me what the remainder is. They have higher priority over plus and minus. So so you remember when we were going going through that expression, we did the multiplications before we did the subtractions. Uh, that follows these rules. We do all the multiplications first, you know, through the whole thing. And then, you know, after we're all done with them, then we go back and we see if there's any additions and subtractions. And that's why. Um, so that that was talking about the order of precedence. I don't know how that happened. All right. So let's go to uh, let's quickly go to a um, challenge here. All right. Uh, which operator is evaluated first? Well, the division operator is evaluated first. Which operators are oh, next? Uh, which operator is evaluated first? The minus M is operated first. I think. Yeah, all right. Which one's which one's first? Uh, it's uh, division and multiplication are the same. They're the same. So uh, it's left to right. So this one is first. And um, so this one, first is the parentheses. And then you apply the minus sign. And then you apply the division. So which one's first? The parentheses, or the plus sign. Is a, that's the operation that's done, done first because it's in the parentheses. All right. This one is, um, which one, which operator is evaluated first? Well, it would be the, uh, this, the minus sign, because uh, what's in the parentheses is first, so that would be the minus sign. And then which evaluated, which one is evaluated second? So after, so once we have what d minus three is, the next one, next higher, next one, that's the highest priority would be the, the division because division is higher priority than a plus sign. So the second one is the division and the third one is the plus sign. All right, okay, very good. So uh, that's, so here's one more challenge. That's, because we got, we got some time. Type the program's output. 19 plus 2 is 21. Uh, 5 minus 4 is 1. Oh, boy, these are really hard, aren't they? All right, I'm going to go to uh, here. I'll go to here. I'll skip the middle two for you. Uh, print X, then Y. Um, X is one. X doesn't change after the one. So I'm going to put that there. And then there's a space. And then what's Y? Um, if X is one, then one plus nine is 10. And then 10 times three is 30. So Y is 30. So I'm going to do 30. And with the enter. All right, let's do the last one. All right, print X. Uh, that's just X. The X doesn't change after 
After this assignment statement, we don't see X on the left side of any statement after that. So that's what the value is, is put a three there. And then we're gonna take three and the innermost parentheses is this one. You always do the inner, 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 inner first. So this, this makes it six. And then six times two is 12. So this is 12. Uh, and then we add 5 to 12, and that equals 17. So let's, let's just, y is equal to 17. Okay, you can do the middle two. Python expressions. Let's see, there's a, let me just go back here. Python expressions and then modulo. It's all, all the, no, try to get through. Well, all right, let's do Python expressions. Um, yeah, here we're just doing, we're just seeing how it's written in Python, removing the parentheses. Yes. Uh, okay, single space around operators. It's a good practice. Well, that's an opinion. So I, I like minimalist, but. Whatever. See. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> ah, whatever. Okay, so yeah, you should. Uh, I don't know. It's up to you. It's personal preference. Okay, now we have these compound operators, and what they are is, is you know, we've been doing a lot of this. Age equals age minus one. You have seeing this this thing on the left side, and then seeing also seeing it on the right side. Okay, well if if it does look something like this, where it's age equals age operator or something, you can skip the second one, skip putting this one here, and then take this operator and just put it over on the left side of the equal sign. So in other words, instead of saying age equals age plus one, you can say age plus equals one. Uh, age divided equals one. See, that's this age divided by one, which is just age. All right, so uh, those are compound operators and those are very handy and we use those a lot. Uh, initially it's, so this tells you, this takes num atoms, adds five to it, and that's the result. So if num atoms is initially seven, that's gonna make num atoms be 12 and so on. So let's, uh, no commas allowed, yeah, don't put commas there. It doesn't, doesn't know what to do with those. Besides, I think in other languages, a comma is like a decimal point. All right, so I will just do this one and then I'll call it quits. All right, surface area is this. Oh, okay, so it's convert this into a regular Python expression, right? Um, so uh, we're supposed to we're supposed to compute the surface area, aren't we? Okay, so surface of sphere, we're supposed to compute this. That equals, and you should just be able to write this, okay? So it's gonna be R times R. Oh, radius of sphere. It's gonna be radius of sphere. Did they let you do this? Copy. Uh, radius of sphere times radius of sphere. That, that makes it squared. And then, uh, so that takes care of this term there. And then we're just gonna multiply it by four and we're gonna multiply it by pi. So. Let's say multiply by four, and then let's multiply by pi. And pi is capital P-I. So let's uh, check this. Okay, we got that one. Let's just go to the third one, and then I'll call it quits. So grade one and grade two are read from input, compute the average. So it's... Uh, and assign average grade to it. So average grade, this thing, copy, paste equals, I guess we're just doing, you gotta put parentheses around this, grade one plus grade two divided by two. That's how you compute the average. The thing is, is you can't just write grade one plus grade two, oops, this is a, you can't just write, 
you, you, you can't write it without the parentheses because if you write it without the parentheses, it's going to do this first, and then it's going to add that to this, which is not what you want. You want you want you want to add these two things first, and then you want to divide it by two. So this should be the answer, he thinks. Less. Ah, good. All right. So so you can do the rest. Um, I'll do a follow up uh, video, uh, and uh, um, do the rest. Do these, and I'll do. Um, I'll get you started on the two labs too. Pretty soon, I'm going to start not telling you so much. But at first, I want to I want to get you guys going. All right. So, are there any questions? Let's see, let me get this over here. Where's my there we go. All right, are you folks at home uh, all good? All right, very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, so I'll see you next week, uh, and I'll do a follow-up uh, video. I'll, I'm going to post this video up as soon as I get home, and then I'll do a follow-up. All right? Any questions here? Oh, a lot of people here. All right, thanks for watching.